Good evening. How are you all this evening? Having a good time so far? Good. I want to welcome you to the 19th Riverview Hall of Fame. And if we can keep it down to a shout over here, we'll be okay. Uh, to the Riverview Hall of Fame Scholarship and Civic Awards Dinner. Try saying that three times. Uh, my name is Jerry Perry. I hope Mayor DeSena remembers me, but you know, it's my cousin. Uh, and since, <laughs> and I won't let him forget it either, you know. Uh, and since no one else has volunteered, uh, you're stuck with me for the evening, so I'm your host. The first thing I'd like to do is recognize a few special guests, and this is where I usually get in trouble, I forget somebody. Now, if I forget you, you know what I mean? Art Kester, you can raise your hand, okay? Let me know. Uh, the first person I'd like to introduce is uh, Mayor James D. Sane of the city of Wyandotte, uh, who's been everything but a cook and bottle washer in Michigan and everything else. So. We're very proud of Jim. Uh, next one is Councilman Elmer Trombley from the city of Riverview. Oh, yeah. He is way back over in the corner. We put him there especially for that, Elmer. Uh, Councilman Jim Trombley. Do it for the kids, Jim. Uh, Tim Bosman, Fire Chief, City of Riverview. I'm not necessarily introducing it in, in uh, order of importance here. It's just that that's where your name came up when I when I saw you here. So anyway, Sue Tressel from Senator Patterson's office. There you go. Jeff Donofrio from uh, Congressman Dingle's office. Where's he at? He's not here yet. Okay, Mary. I expect George and Laura Bush to be showing up pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gary Face, Riverview Board of Ed. James Katurkis, Riverview Board of Ed. And my old buddy Dennis Desmaris, Superintendent of Schools, Riverview. I just couldn't pass up since I got the mic. I want to do some my old boss, Jack Shoup. He was everything, everything but head cook and bottle washer for City of Riverview. Okay. Second of all, I'd like to introduce the executive committee for the Hall of Fame. Uh, folks, without this small group, th this wouldn't happen, and I believe it, it is small. We used to have 22 people on the committee, and now we're down to about very few. Anyway, first of all, I want to introduce the, the chairperson of the Riverview Hall of Fame Committee, the executive committee, uh, soon to be retired, Mary Zellner. Where are you at, Mary? Our secretary, Nancy Capeza. Our treasurer, John Lawler. John's going to be running the silent auction, so you're probably hearing a lot from him tonight. Trustee Jim Trombley, Councilman Jim Trombley. Trustee George Brown, past school board member. George, where you at? There you go. And Trustee Jack Kesterson. And our latest volunteer who, my gosh, what a worker, Nancy Holloway. Nancy, where are you at? Thank you, Nancy, for volunteering and stepping up. Uh, I'd like to give a special recognition to Steve Tackett, our TV guy here, who's going to tape all this. And that booklet that you're looking at, Don Ukrainik and Gwen Molner put that together. So it's a lot of work. So let's give them a big, let's give them a big hand. Give it up. Uh, as I, uh, you were told earlier, the silent auction uh, and the, um, what do you call it, the Chinese auction also, John? 
At any rate, is over here to the left. You're welcome to go over there anytime during the program. And you're welcome to go to the bar anytime during the program. But can we please, please, please do it quietly with respect to the folks that are being uh, honored tonight? Uh, I would sure would appreciate it. But uh, again, we need the money, so don't, don't be afraid to bring your money over there. Uh, Mayor DeSena, don't be afraid. This is, you know, I know you got it. So. Okay, next we have the, uh, well, first of all, I, I got to tell you, it, it bears repeating, this is all a voluntary effort. Every penny goes into the scholarship fund, folks. We don't make a dime. The only thing I get out of this is this monkey suit. And, uh, you know, I mean, you probably don't appreciate that either, so, but, <laughs> but at any rate, uh, uh, we, we'd appreciate it if you participate over there because we need the money. As you know, times uh, are, uh, times have, are getting tougher and uh, it's, it's tougher to raise money. So if you would, silent auction. That's where we make our money. Uh, the Gold Sponsors Award. If I can get some help up here, John, uh, would you help me up here? I'd additionally like to tell you that the gold sponsors, the ones that we're going to announce and give an award to, are $500 and more donors. So folks, if you can patronize your local merchants here, uh, these are the folks we'd like you to take care of because without them, this don't happen. Trust me, this does not happen. This is where we get the money for these scholarships. Our first uh, is Advantage One, Credit Union. Somebody going to come up and pick an award for Elmer? Would you come up and get that uh, award for the Advantage One, please? Uh, I have an award here for Capital Waste, but uh, we're going to we're going to give that to uh, somebody else to uh, pick up later on. The City of Riverview Council and Mayor. Who's who's going to pick that up? Elmer, would you take that one, please? Colonial Village Cooperative. Is anybody here from Colonial Village Cooperative? I was told there was. I guess we'll have to set that aside, John. Uh, Cornerstone Environment, Environmental Group. There, they'll pick theirs up later. They're not here tonight, but we appreciate that. DTE Energy, folks. I gotta tell you, these folks stepped right up and. and we really appreciate it. I won't tell you how much they donated, but I got to tell you, they, they stepped up to the plate, and this is really helping us out. Pfeiffer? Pfeiffer. Sharon Pfeiffer is going to pick that up for DTE Energy. And listen, would you pass it along? We really appreciate the help. Thank you very much. Pentuck, Quiver, and Kobliak, PC. There we go. Oh! <laughs> okay. How you doing, my man? Good, good. Yeah. You tell, uh, Mike, you tell uh, Randy and the boys, thanks very much. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Riverview Administrative Cabinet. Is anybody here from Riverview Administrative Cabinet? <laughs> Nancy Holloway, are you going to accept that? All right, Nancy, thank you. Pardon me? There you are. Riverview Board of Ed. Are they going to send Denny up here for that one? Or, they <laughs> or what is the... Uh, oh, Mr. Gary Face is going to show up here. Here we go. Gary Face from Riverview Board of Ed. To the Riverview Board of Ed, we thank you very much. We appreciate that. The scholars will enjoy this. Thank you very much. Riverview Firefighters Association. There's the game right there, I'll tell you. All right. 
Derek Wilson's going to pick that up. Derek, a couple of guys, thank you very much. Every year they're there for us. Every year the firefighters are there for us. Yeah. Riverview Towing, Ronnie Miller. Stuck tonight, you get a free tool, is that right, Ronnie? Oh. <laughs> okay, and Wolverine Tractor and Equipment. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's Again, I'd like to thank everybody, all the gold sponsors for stepping up. Without them, folks, this don't happen. You scholars can bet on that one, you bet you. So let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Next we have the Distinguished Civil uh, Civic Service Awards. Okay, Distinguished Service Awards. We're going to start off with the Riverview Firefighters. Riverview Firefighter Ken Boyer, would you come up please? Ken has been a Riverview Firefighter for five years and has served locals 3667 as Union President for two years. He also has served as Gibraltar Council Person for five, God, he ought to get an award for that alone. And was one of the youngest to ever be voted into Council. Ken was the lead organizer for the 2007 Riverview Firehouse, uh, Open Firehouse. Uh, when, uh, which turned out a record number this year. He's currently in the process of organizing 2008. They got you stuck with that one again. Eh? Uh, he's, he has a positive attitude, reflects well on all persons he, becomes, he comes in contact with, and everyone appreciates his effort that he puts forth. Firefighters are coming to expect great things from Ken now and in the future. Congratulations, Ken. We had a photographer earlier. There he is. There, there's a photographer there. Hold on. Shake your hand. Okay. The next award goes to the Goodfellows Member of the Year. This is a special one for me, folks. On the morning of the Goodfellow paper sale, one has to worry if anyone, let alone a lot of people, show up. Uh, there are a few, though, that we never have to worry about. Every year, year in and year out, the Goodfellas organization can depend on that smiling face of none other than Sally Mazarin. Sally also worked for a number of years to help out the Riverview or the Trenton Fire Charities, but uh, no, that's Trenton. That's good. John, you know all about that Trenton stuff, don't you, John? Retired Deputy Chief John Masley. There you go. Okay, the Kiwanis Club Member of the Year, Orville Homeister. Now, I've known him and his family and his dad for years and years. They've always belonged to Kiwanis as far as I know. Uh, when you're mentioning the pioneer families of the uh, city of Riverview, the name Holmeister has to be included. Yeah, Holmeister Court, yeah, right. They can street after him. Uh, his dad built. Uh, this family goes uh, has been giving back to the city for a long time, folks. Orville Holmeister, whose dad built was a past councilman and a, uh, in a past, I believe, charter member of the Riverview Count uh, Kiwanis. Yes, he was. Uh, and Orville, like his dad, is following in his footsteps and being honored tonight by the Kiwanians uh, as a Kiwanian of the Year. So let's have a hand for Orville. He listened to me for some reason, I don't know, so, okay. 
Next one we have the Police Officer of the Year, City of Riverview. It's Roseanne Wooliver. You know, I, I can remember being in a police station years ago, and I won't say how many. And I remember saying to the chief, who's that? And the chief said to me, oh, she's a new member of the uh, police department, but she works in Drano. I said, say, no way. Them guys look like the dregs of society when they go to work for Drano. He says, well, don't like the work. Don't let the looks fool you. She says, she's tough. So, at any rate, don't cross her. Uh, I have to tell you, I know her fellow police officers think she's a pretty damn good detective, too, and she just cleaned up a lot of cases, folks who read the paper. So, let's give Roseanne a big hand. She was picked by two officers. Okay, next we have the uh, Senior Citizen of the Year. I, I don't, you know, it, 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 the person that works at the Senior Citizen thing for the year, it sounds like, okay. Joanne Maritho, are you here tonight? All right, Joanne. Yeah. Joanne has been an extraordinary volunteer in the Riverview School District for the past 10 years or more. She continues to work at the Memorial School, spending a, uh, a few uh, days a week tutoring children and helping out in the media center. Uh, the boys and girls at Memorial School adore and uh, the intergenerational bonds that have uh, been formed through the years are uh, forging a, a memorable uh, relationship. Joan. Congratulations. Thank you for all your, your efforts and volunteering. Uh, and folks, that's, that's all these folks do. Okay. My next, uh, next part of the program is the uh, Hall of Fame Kiwanis, Lions, and uh, Tomiko Scholarship Awards. Uh, before I do that, I want to introduce the uh, person who's going to be giving those. And, and uh, if the school board, uh, I want you to know we've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is Mary's retiring, but the bad news is she's going to be in on wage negotiations. So you know, what I say. <laughs> okay, next is the uh, scholarship awards. The person going to be given out, as I already said, is Mary Zellner, the glue to the whole organization, folks. And if she isn't here next year, we're gonna fold. So, okay, without any further ado, let's give Mary a big hand so she'll be back next year. Good evening, everyone. Uh, one thing about I find I have one thing I found out about working with Jerry. If you believe everything he says, I will bring you one of my manure scoops. So just <laughs> don't pay attention to Jerry. Okay. Um, as a member of the faculty of Riverview Community High School and the senior class sponsor, I am honored to be here tonight to present the uh, six Hall of Fame scholars. These fine young people will each. Uh, receive $1,500, that's up $500 from what we have given in the past. And historically, uh, when we started the Hall of Fame Scholarship Program, which is really our emphasis, we honor a number of people, but okay. Folks, in a classroom, you would be pink slipped. <laughs> now sit on, <laughs> Sit up. I have no idea what you were doing, but I can tell you, I cannot continue while you are distracting the presenter. Behave, Russ. Okay. Thank you for the respect. Okay. Um, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> um, when we started 
with the Hall of Fame scholarship, we gave out one $500 scholarship. We have over the years grown the program to two, to three, to four. We went from 500 to 1,000, and this year we felt rather than have the money sit in our account, we, we're taking the gamble. We felt it was more important to give these kids this money and we will work and try and raise more so that we can give at least six next year. So, obviously Jerry and John and Jim are back there saying support the program because this is where we raise our money uh, to give out these scholarships. So we're very excited this year that we have ma uh, managed to come up with enough money to give all six of our Hall of Fame scholars $1,500, okay? Our first scholar is Jillian Bach. Jill? Jill has a 4.065 grade point average. She's ranked fifth in the class of 222. She is an active member of student council for four years. She's a student council treasurer, National Honor Society. She was inducted as a sophomore and has been a member for three years. She is my vice president of the senior class. I see her every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. as we make key decisions for the class. Secretary of the Key Club, Spanish Club uh, member, and she has been a peer mediator since her days at SEATS. She um, is very diversified because she's also uh, an athlete. She has her three-year varsity letter for volleyball and tennis. She held the number one tennis doubles position. She was on the All Down River tennis team. She was all region tennis second team. She's one of eight Huron League scholar athletes, and she's going to be attending the University of, of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and she hopes, well, she plans to study business with a focus on finance. Don't we need good people in that position? Jack is going to give Jillian her uh, certificate, and then what we do is we will mail the money straight to Ann Arbor uh, at the close of the school year. You know, I'm thinking about tonight, one of the things I, that passed through my mind is, so often we hear the negatives of what's happening. And, and tonight you are going to see nine of the finest young people that we could have because I work with these young folks every day and they are just really quality people. Our second scholar is Tom Fasca. <laughs> Tom has a 4.0 GPA. He's ranked eighth in the class. He's an active member of student council. He was a class officer for three years. He's currently vice president of the Spanish Club and the National Honor Society. He's played baseball, basketball, he's, and he is a third degree, don't mess with this kid, black belt in, is it Taekwondo? Very good. As well as a certified Taekwondo instructor. Another uh, young person planning to attend U of M Ann Arbor and he also would like to major in business. Tom Fasca.
Jeff is ranked 14th in our class this year with a grade point average of 3.9683. He's participated in or been a member of uh, cross country for four years and track for three. He's studied in our vocational program in, the, in graphic arts. He's a member of the National Honor Society Art Club and Lit Club. He's a scholar, he was nominated for a Scholar Athlete Award. And he has contributed to and helped produce our literary uh, magazine, Peace of Mind, for all four years. And that's a major undertaking. He was chosen to compete in the Skills USA Graphic Arts Competition. Now this is, the, now everyone listen. Jeff plans to attend the Illinois Institute of Art in downtown Chicago, where he will major in game art and design. A very creative young man, Jeff Kaminsky. Turkis. Eric? <laughs> Eric has a 3.9524 grade point average and he's ranked 15th in his class. He's a member of the, um, he was a member of the Honor Guard for the 2007 commencement ceremony. He was elected class vice president. Uh, earlier in his career at the high school. He's, a, he's been a member of the drama club for four years and has participated in all eight shows during his high school tenure there. He plays the trombone in the band and, and has been a section leader for two years. He's been in marching band, symphonic band, and the jazz band. He's a member of the environmental group Yikes and the Spanish club. He's also a three-year member of the National Honor Society. In addition to all that, he's a member of the St. Cyprian's Band for their Christmas and Easter ceremonies, and he teaches catechism at Our Lady of the Woods in uh, Woodhaven. Eric will attend Eastern Michigan University, where I hope he'll be a Huron and not an Eagle, uh, where he plans to study biochemistry and continue on to get his master's degree. Congratulations, Eric. tonight uh, for Hall of Fame is Christina Moffat. Christina? <laughs> Christina is graduating with a 3.9837 grade point average and she's ranked 12th in her class. She's a, a participant as an honor guard in the commencement ceremony last year. Uh, she's been a member of the varsity swim team since her freshman year and was named the captain this year, her senior year. She's been in, involved with Spanish Club, National Honor Society. Uh, she's been involved also with the stream team where they go out and clean up uh, the streams. And she helps uh, remove the litter from the water beds. She's helped run boy and girl scout camps and has been a math tutor for many years. Uh, Christina plans to attend college next year, and she really hasn't, at, at least as of this writing, had not decided uh, between Northern, Adrian, or Eastern, but she does know that she would like to uh, major in secondary education with an emphasis in mathematics. Christina. tonight is Doug Trudeau. Doug? I 
I met with the parents the other night as we plan our all night party for the class of 2008 and uh, Doug's mom was uh, laughing about she didn't know when Doug had time to go to school because he's involved in so many things. Uh, Doug is president of the class of 2008 and he also meets with me not only every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. but we run into each other in the hall, I send for him, I, I seek him out and we make various decisions. And it's really nice to work uh, with Doug because he has his head on straight and he represents the class as the class would want to be represented. So, not only is he president this year, last year he was president, he was vice president of the, no, he's president, he's president of the senior class this year. Last year he was president of student council. This year he's vice president of student council and the key club. See, you gotta keep up with these guys. They, he's been an active member of the National Honor Society, Safe Schools, Peer Mediation, and EGAD. He's a member of the varsity tennis team for four years and was the team captain during his, both his junior and this year his senior year. He uh, played as a number one singles player in uh, tennis since his sophomore year and he was voted MVP all three years. It says a lot about this fine young man. Doug plans to attend Grand Rapids State University where he will study business and accounting. Doug. organizations and friends of education if they wanted to join us in this venture. So uh, Kiwanis has started giving their scholarship out here tonight and I think uh, well we had um, our Kiwanis scholarship um, recipient have her picture taken with Orville who's the Kiwanian of the year this year. We thought that would be nice for the club to have. This year uh, the Kiwanis is honor honoring Cecilia Carroll. Cecilia? Cecilia has a 3.9127 grade point average. She's ranked 17th in the class. Um, she has maintained this grade point average while participating in numerous clubs, sports, and extracurricular activities, including National Honor Society, Spanish Club. She's secretary of student council. She was a member of the honor guard at last year's commencement. She played on the girls. Now, guys, listen to this. She played on the girls' AAA travel hockey team. Hockey team? Okay, don't mess with her, okay? She was awarded a national medal for academic achievement for the Midwest Elite Hockey League. She has been a student tutor, and she volunteered at the YMCA store camp, at, and she's also volunteered as a hockey coach, and she's been doing volunteer work at several wrestling tournaments. Cecilia uh, plans on enrolling in the honors program at Eastern, where she will receive an academic scholarship, and she hopes to pursue a career in elementary education. has joined us for the past few years in honoring uh, academic excellence also. And this year, uh, we are honoring Christine Mazuka. <laughs> Christine is ranked fourth with a grade point average of 4.0794. She's been an active member of Student Council, National Honor Society, Spanish Club, and Key Club. And she meets with me every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. And she is treasurer of the class of 2008. 
She's been a member of the basketball team for four years and she also ran varsity track. She has maintained her outstanding uh, grade point average while working part-time and while being involved with many volunteer opportunities with her church and community. Through uh, our high school job shadowing program, uh, Christine has been able to reaffirm her decision to pursue a career in the health field. Wayne State University is her destination and she would like to be a nurse practitioner. Another partner uh, with us is the Tominko Higher Amines Inc. Corporation uh, down on West Jefferson. We knew him as Arkema last year. The year before we knew him as Adelfina. Uh, we can keep going, but we are just very pleased that they continue to give two $500 scholarships. This year, uh, we're recognizing first Chelsea Duchesne. Chelsea? With her 4.1429 grade point average, Chelsea is salutatorian of the class of 2008. Um, that means she ranks second out of 222. She has taken a number of AP and honors courses, and uh, she's also been vi busy with varsity uh, athletics. Since her freshman year, uh, she lettered in rowing. She's also played volleyball uh, for two years um, and basketball her first three years. She, as a junior, she received her letter in basketball but was unable to play her senior year because she was interested in pursuing uh, the rowing and the two conflicted. Uh, Chelsea has been a member of the Spanish club for four years, class treasurer the previous uh, years, and as a sophomore, Chelsea uh, became a member of the Honor Society. Uh, she joined uh, Key Club in her junior year, and she's also a very active member of diversity. Chelsea's not for sure if she's gonna stay in state and go to U of M Ann Arbor, or go out state and go to the University of Southern Cal, but her uh, interest is environmental engineering. Congratulations, Chelsea. I didn't, I wasn't in school today, so I didn't get to ask her what, what play. But she has the lead in a, one of the major plays down the river tonight. Which one? Anyone know what play Caitlin's singing in the rain? So she sends her regrets. She was extremely embarrassed when she found out that this conflicted with her being here. But, you know, we live in a... Uh, society where everybody is busy and this is an opportunity for Caitlin. So let me just tell you that Caitlin is ranked seventh in the class. She has a 4.0397 grade point average. Um, she's been in the band program since fifth grade. She's been their uh, drum major uh, both junior and senior year. She marshals that band around like a real trooper. Uh, she's um, been first chair clarinet in the symphonic band since her sophomore year. She enjoys theater, obviously, that's where she is, as well as music, and she has been in uh, the drama club all four years. Uh, she, Caitlin has been active in her church and is the Sunday night uh, pianist. She has also performed with various community theater groups downriver, and this uh, 
past winter had the privilege of being the vocal director for their Christmas show. She's going to go to Valparaiso University in Indiana next fall to pursue majors in music and chemistry. So even though she's not here, let's give Caitlin Leonard a round of applause. Now, as I pick up all my papers, I'm going to steal Jerry Perry's speech. So if it doesn't quite work out, it's my fault. Okay? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> As you can see, we have a, a number of great students at Riverview High School, and we're proud of all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You who has the mic last, you know. At any rate, I, I happen to be sitting over by the fire department table, and three Mazarin boys are sitting there, and he says, geez, did you hear those grade point averages? Bill says, yeah, the three of us couldn't add up to three. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, I forgot to know, the photographer for tonight is Ray Bucarelli from Ray and Company. Uh, he does this for us. It doesn't cost us a dime. So. <laughs> And, and incidentally, he's a really good grad. I, uh, I know it's getting late, and uh, Rick, your hot cocoa is waiting at home for an hour now, so. Uh, but I, uh, I, I be remiss, every year I make a few remarks, and Nancy and Mary says, you know, no funny stories, and don't make it long. So, I try to make it short, but. I'd like to uh, uh, make a few remarks to the uh, young scholars here tonight and the, the other young, uh, young people present. Uh, I, I know what you're thinking. You're leaving school. And uh, you're thinking, oh boy, I'll be up there, you know, out from the repressive thumbs of my parents. I can stay all night if I want. I can stay out, you know. And if I want to party, I'm going to party. We know what you're thinking. Your folks weren't born yesterday. But I know what you should be thinking. And in all seriousness, folks. <clears throat> I have to apologize to all you scholars and students for um, my generation and the baby boomers. I have to apologize for the national debt we're going to leave you. It's up in the gazillions. And we're borrowing money from Dubai and Saudi Arabia just to pay the interest. I apologize. Um, I have to apologize for the huge uh, trade deficit that we're leaving to you. Um, the reason that is we're buying more goods than we're shipping out. We're also shipping out a lot of jobs. I apologize. But all is not lost according to the free press. Michigan is hardly helpless. Their storied and work ethic and an emerging willing willingness to stop waiting for big solutions of old and start acting on small and smart ones with promising payoffs. I want to apologize for leaving you with the energy mess. For all the foot dragging and the politicking that's going on, we should be able to clear this up. During World War II, the Japanese blockaded all of the rubber producing nations. Just the start of World War II. But the good old American USA, ingenuity, Within six months, we invented synthetic rubber. I want to apologize for the social security mess we leave in the And Medicare. Medicare will be out by 2019 and social security by 2041, unless we do something soon. I apologize for the healthcare mess 
escalating costs, real estate problem, energy, and global warming. You're going to face some tremendous challenges in the future. But if you believe as I do, you can overcome these challenges. You've got your work cut out, but because I believe in hope, and because I believe in a good old USA, American work ethic and ingenuity, you can do it, but you've got to do it. Good luck. Thank you for listening. Okay, Rick, a couple more minutes. <laughs> Uh, let's go to the uh, Hall of Fame inductees. First on the list is Russell Daniel Brown, was born in Walton Hills, Ohio, to the parents of Giselle and the late Father Ed. Now, I, I have to predicate this, but I've, I've had to condense some of these uh, bios. All of them are about 20 pages long of all the things they've done. <laughs> And uh, Russ happened to be the oldest JC in the West, so he he's got so many accomplishments. And Mary, uh, I had I, I took the liberty of reducing. It, I hope so. If you folks want to read all the real detail of what these folks done, it's it's in the book there. So, but at any rate, they uh, Russ and his family moved to Riverview in 1971 when Russ was 17. Russ's first job when he moved to Riverview was working at EJ Corvette. How many remember that? <laughs> I think you were that old. Yeah. We're now Kmart stands, okay? Russ graduated from Riverview Community High School in 1973. There you go, see there you go. After graduation from RETS, which was Radio Electronics Television School in Detroit, he went to Siena Heights University. Where is that? Adrian? Okay. And completed his Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. Russ spent a year uh, in Melbourne, Australia, working as an engineer for General Motors when he met and shook hands with the Prime Minister of Australia while he was demonstrating machine on national TV. Very good. You didn't blow, right, Russ? Okay, Russ is currently working for S Consistent, is that it? The Consistent Group in Warren and Windsor and as electrical controls engineer. He and his wife, George, met and married in 1979 and moved into the house on Matthew Street where they raised three children. Andrew, who's in the movie business in Hollywood. Teresa, 21, attending Ferris State University, and Benjamin, 17, now a senior at Riverview Community High School. All right. All three of the children went to Riverview schools and played in the seats in high school marching, or high school bands. Uh, early on, Russ was involved in many community activities, taking, including taking a neighbor boy uh, from a single parent home to scout camp. I had to put that right in right away, just taking this boy yeah. uh, to, uh, to a camp outing. And that camping trip turned into being a, a scoutmaster because the, uh, the regular scoutmaster had to go to work afternoon, so Russ finally ended up as a full-time scoutmaster. And did I mention he was an Eagle Scout? Did I? Around 1982, Russ became involved with the JCs. Russ later became president of the chapter and won money chapter individual uh, awards. Russ received the prestigious International JC Senatorship number 435, there you go, okay, which is awarded to the JC member from the local chapter for exceptional leadership and dedication. Uh, one project near and dear to his heart was the annual Haunted House Project. Another project Russ was involved in was the Riverview Playscape, and I saw that one going up. That, that's, that was a real feat. <laughs> it involved uh, a thousand residents from near and far in a, in a six-day experience. Russ was public relations chairman, and for about six months, he was at almost every council meeting, school board, uh, Lions Club, Kiwanis Club, Parents Club, and everybody, anybody who would listen to give them reports in, in, about the fundraising and to encourage them to come on out and, put, and, and uh, help. He has authorized and edited the Riverview District newsletter, countless other newspaper articles in the News Herald, Detroit News and Free Press. 
He also did a five minute story on Channel 4. In addition to the haunted house and the playscape and his other activities and being involved in, he's in Junior Olympics, Easter egg hunts, senior citizen outings, and one of his claims to fame is being Santa. Well, I can tell you that one. He, every year, here he comes. Santa Russ attended countless Santa, Santa luncheons and hundreds of kids, with hundreds of kids, American Legion visits and City Beautification Commission, Commission's annual tree lighting ceremony and photos with Santa. Russ, Russ induction makes uh, this a historical event and him and his wife, George, are the first husband and wife duo, duo to be inducted. So with that being said, Russ, I now officially induct you into the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Jerry. He's known as the second oldest JC in the group. Look, George, we got a couple of matching bookends now. <laughs> I want to thank George, my love of my life and my best friend, and I want to thank her for being my wife. I couldn't have done any better without her. I want to thank her for raising three with me, three very different children that we have here. <laughs> Andy in the movie business, uh, Tracy going to college, and Ben soon to go to college. And I want to thank them for allowing them to let me still be in their lives. To my extended family and friends here tonight, to Roy and Julie and Sharon, and uh, they're to, and Katie and Tori, my good friends Daryl and Fern. Without them doing the things I couldn't do, and allowing me to persuade them sometimes about <laughs> against their will to accomplish the things that we did here at Riverview. Sometimes, every time. <laughs> We're going to do this, right? <laughs> to James Peterkus, who wrote my induction letter to the Riverview Hall of Fame, thank you very much. You're two for two now. To my co-inductee, Mary Jaros, thank you very much. I'm honored to share the spotlight with you here tonight. To our future leaders here tonight, you might tell by my bio and my award tonight that this honor is given me through my volunteer community activities. It's just one of the mission statements that the Hall of Fame has, but to me, it's the most important. Community activities are very, very important. Join a group, any group, and get that out there and support your school and your community. Well, the volunteers of a community is what makes that community a great place to live and raise a family. Take a look at other communities around our city that do not have that large volunteer base that we have here in Riverview, and you can just see the difference. When I came here tonight, I didn't know what hat to wear. So I decided on this hat. <laughs> <laughs> So the JCs has this little project that we kind of nicknamed the Santa Drive-By. It's where we have visitations to people's houses. He just barges in sometimes. He usually just mobbed by the little ones and has a bit of trouble getting to his chair on the couch or the chair that's set up for him. When I get to a couch, I kind of just kind of flop down because it's a lot easier when I have all these kids hanging on me. Well, this particular room had a couch that been a little worse for wear or came from the wrong side of the Art Van Clearance Center. <laughs> or maybe it wasn't just built for this type of Santa. <laughs> well, anyways, I sit down and crack, <laughs> it snaps in half. <laughs> so I'm sitting on this couch with my knees above my ears oh. and all the kids climbing on top of me, Santa, Santa. <laughs> all the adults in the room, there must've been what, five or six parents there. They're just cracking their laughing, they're just laughing their butts off. Except one, I think the mom of the house. <laughs> well, when I got done with the visit, I had a couple of men haul me out of the chair because I couldn't get out. I wonder if she ever did get a, uh, get a couch for Christmas that year. A couple of quickie stories about my kids and me. Andy has a very keen sense of humor. It's always great when he calls from California. You want the good news or the not so good news? <laughs> but this story isn't about that. When he was six or seven years old, we had uh, captured and tamed a turtle from Grandma Pat's place out, out in uh, Jackson. It was a pretty big turtle, and we had it in one of them plastic kiddie pools outside. Well, Andy and his friends were in the yard, and they're all playing on the swing set in the back area by the pool. I come outside and said their mom had called, and the kids had to go home. 
He goes, but Dad, they can't leave until they find the turtle. Oh, it seems that they were playing with the turtle outside the kiddie pool. I kind of get pissed off. You're kidding! Well, about skipping a beat, he turns and stops swinging on his sweat, and he looks at me and went, but Dad, if I was kidding, I would say, a horse walks into a bar. <laughs> I'm going, I, oh, what did I say after that? Go find the turtle. And anyways, the turtle's gone, made it to, made it to the river. A short one about Tracy is that whenever she does get married, whoever it might be, our daddy-daughter dance is going to be Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I don't know if anyone there will like it, especially Grandma Giselle, but I know we will love it for Tracy. The last story I have is with my, my young son, Ben. He has his 88 Jeep where the bumper happened to fall off. While we do a little planning and come up with some MacGyver fixes of drilling a hole in the frame and the bumper, and attach it. And he goes, great. This reminds me of one of them MasterCard commercials. Four one-inch bolts and nuts and washers to attach the bumper for $12.55. One one-inch drill bit to drill the holes in the bumper in the car, $8.45. Spending quality time with your injury-prone injury father in the emergency room, priceless. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> George and I have both be honored with this award, mostly on the things as we did it individually, and some of the things we did mostly as a team, but all of it as volunteers. But we know that neither of us would have not been able to accomplish our goals without the support from the people of the city and the people of our friends and family. This award goes to all of them as well. Now I close with one final note. 75 bucks for 50-50 tickets, 50 bucks in Chinese raffle tickets, being here tonight, honored by the River of Hall of Fame, priceless. Thank you. Are you awake, Rick? You okay? <laughs> Last but not least, we have Mary Jerose. And again, Mary, I apologize. I had to tear this down to from 40 pages to three. <laughs> <laughs> but it, everything she said had on there was true. I'll tell you, Mary's been a very active person. Let me start off. Mary Jerose was born in Columbia, South America, to the parents of Roman and Inez Gilson. Is that how I pronounce that, Mary? Okay. While in Columbia, Mary attended Catholic school uh, for girls run by Dominican nuns, where she was very active. She com competed in roller, roller skating? and was deeply involved in religious and charity service at schools. Among the most powerful experiences at the school was monthly service trips to impoverished rural areas teaching hygiene and religion. In 1954, Rowan and Inez decided that America would be the better place for their daughter Mary and her brother to grow up. Upon arriving in America, the lack of fluency in the English language posed challenges for the entire family but all strove to learn English and begin a new life. The family settled in Detroit where Brother Jim graduated from Cass Technical High School. I know somebody else who And went on to be an orphan. Mary graduated from patronage of jo St. Joseph, a Catholic high school in Detroit's east side. And attended Wayne State University. In high school, she was involved in relig religious activities sports, theatrical, and social endeavors. Mary always an uh, left an imprint and changed places she had been uh, for the better. It was 1960 after five years uh, entering the United States that she and her family took the oath of citizenship. Shortly thereafter, she met and married Rick. You awake? Rick, hello. <laughs> Riverview. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then eventually moved to Riverview in 1969 to raise the two children. Daughter Inez Marie, a graduate of Riverview High School, uh -huh. and the son Steve went to Gabriel Richard. So we kind of spread it around with both Riverview schools. Mary is a proud grandmother of Samantha and Joshua and recently a great grandmother of Sadie. Despite finding herself in a new environment with the young family when they moved to River, Riverview, she immediately began her involvement in community service by becoming involved in the campaign to elect Riverview mayor and has gone nonstop ever since. Wh which mayor was that, Mary? Was that Mayor Vreeland or McShane? No? Oh, Belak. Okay. From this point forward, active involvement in the community affairs of Riverview and Downriver in politics of all levels would be continuing an important merit part of Mary's life. In 1970, Mayor Jones appointed her to the Riverview Days Commission where she immediately fell in love with the city and its people. That's what it says here. One of the projects Mary enjoyed early on was, go, uh, was joining venture, a joint venture between the Riverview School Board and the City of Riverview to select Miss Riverview, who would, present, who would represent the city at the Miss Riverview pageant. Mary has served on the Board of Canvassers for Riverview School Elections from 1969 to 2005 and for the city from 1970 to 1996. She only stepped down to support her husband's bid for office and was uh, later reappointed and is still serving today. She was actively involved in the community arts and residence program and combined effort between Riverview and Southgate School Districts. She and husband, her husband were actively involved in the Southview Concert Series and I can attest to that. That was a large undertaking and a very good project. Striving to bring culture to Down River, an area once described by former councilwoman on her shoemaker is a cultural desert. Mary takes patriotism to the highest level. If you need to know about the etiquette of the U.S. flag, Mary would be the person to ask. She's taken her, her presentation on respect for our flag to the Riverview Kiwanis, Trent Rotary, Republican Women's Club, and Down River Republican Grassroots, grassroots just to mention a few. Did I mention Mary's Republican? <laughs> Mary participates in annual Riverview High School Senior uh, Portfolio Night, and she has a long history with the Girl Scouts. From 71 to 81, she served as chair of the R Library Commission. She has served as chairman or chairperson of the uh, Cable Commission from 1981 to 1985. Mary presently services the city of the, uh, serves on the city on the Board Officers Compensation Board. Have they ever taken that recommendation? Never do, they don't listen. The Board of Review and Zoning Board of Appeals. She served on a committee to elect the, a city of Riverview, uh, erect the city of Riverview Veterans Memorial. Get laid on the start of the here. She was a <laughs> sorry, Mary. She was a president presidential elector in the last presidential election. She has served in many capacities on various municipal, state, nation, nation, uh, national campaigns as well as statewide political organizations. Mary has been involved in many charitable events, activity, and activities throughout the region, including leukemia and lymphoma, like the night walk. Woman's Children Hospital, public, er, Pub Night, 1998-2001. Down River Guidance Clinic Auction Week. Down River Residence, 1998-2000, War of 1812 Reenactment. Has participated in many Southern Wayne uh, County Regional Chamber of Commerce activity. She is also director of the Down River Town Hall Lecture Series and celebrity lunches for the past 12 years. Mary has been honored with many awards for her civic, political, and charity work over the many years. To name a few again, Sir Optimus International, the News Herald, the County Commission, the Honor Council for the Arts, the Michigan Republican Party, the Riverview JCs. As you can see, Mary has demonstrated herself as a person who has brought recognition to our city and is truly deserving. And with that, Mary, I now officially induct you into the Riverview Hall of Fame. Mary.
understand that uh, Sue Trussell from Senator Patterson's office uh, has something for you. be remiss if I didn't tell you how many other certificates she's got by the dozens, but just a few. A, cer a certificate of special congressional recognition from Candace Miller, member of Con Congress. A congratulatory, congratulatory letter from John Dingles, Senator, or, or Congressman John Dingle, U.S. Congressman. A congratulatory note from George and Laura Bush from the White House on White House stationery. She had she asked me to say that's White House stationery. So. And you're also a grandma, so here you Okay, without further ado, Mary, could you give us a few words, please? Thank you, thank you. For me, it was a little overwhelming when I took a walk along the wall of Riverview High School and the Riverview City Hall, where the pictures of so many distinguished honorees are in display. It was really overwhelming for me that I would take a piece of that wall as well. Next to my wedding day and the birth of my children, this is a very significant moment in my life. Some time ago, when I came to America, I was looking for that money bush that every foreign tells you about. There is money on the streets in America. Well, folks, I haven't found them yet. <laughs> then my husband says, let's move to Riverview. Riverview. Mmm. I was looking for a lovely view of the water. <laughs> a yacht. Didn't get that either. But instead of that, I found gold, silver, and an extended family. The gold, my folks, my friends, are all those elected officials that given me the opportunity in the community by appointing me to different commissions, to different projects. They are here, some of them are not here. I will not mention their names. They're my mentors. I don't need to mention their names because they know how many times I came and tapped on their shoulders. And time and time again, they never refused me. They were there to lead me into what I have achieved in my community. My extended family, it's all of you, who in some way you have supported me or contributed to making Riverview in our region a better place to live. To the scholarships, or I should say, to the scholarship recipients, congratulations. Every year, I look forward 
to partake in the exercise of portfolio night. That brings me closer to the youth, and that makes me very happy. But let me just say to you, as you begin your new journey, the more one gives to the community, the more one learns. And folks, that's what has happened to me. To my immediate family, I'm not going to ask them to stand, but my mom. Dad is not here, but I'm sure he's listening. To my brother, to my husband, Richard. You know, I feel really sorry for him. <laughs> to my lovely children, Inez and Stephen. Thank you for the endless support. Without your help and consideration, I would not have been here tonight. So with that in mind, I humbly accept this award in your behalf. Thank you.